Now let's look at reason number three, believers are not confident in their relationship with God. Reason number three is believers have been taught to relate to God by following spiritual formulas. Now, two of the formulas that many believers are taught to follow in order to access God, in order to come before God, is an acronym called PRAY, P-R-A-Y, and an acronym called ACTS, A-C-T-S. They're commonly used formulas that are taught within churches and ministries, and, and these formulas pray and acts are based upon Old Testament prayers for the most part. They're based upon Nehemiah's prayer under the law. They're based upon Daniel's prayer under the law. Let's take a look at these acronyms. Let's start with ACTS, A-C-T-S. It's the most popular. ACTS stands for adoration. The A in ACTS stands for adoration, which is adoring God, telling God how great he is. Confession, C, A-C, is, uh, is, confession is the C. Confession is telling God how sinful we are, telling God all about our sins and how we fail to measure up, how, how far we fall away from what he expects from us. So adoration is telling God how great he is. Confession is telling God how bad we are which ultimately then we ask for forgiveness so that our fellowship with him can be restored, our closeness with him can be restored. So with acts, adoration is adoring God, telling God how great he is. Confession is telling God how sinful we are and asking for forgiveness. The T for A-C-T-S, the T is thanksgiving, where we thank God for all that he's done for us and his blessings, and then we thank God for forgiving us based upon our confession in this acronym, A-C-T-S. And then S is supplication, which is talking to God about whatever's on our hearts, making requests of God, praying for others, praying for our community, praying for our church, praying for our family. But what we do is we, we turn these acronyms into the, the doorway to God, that I really can't come into the presence of God. I really can't be close to God. I really don't have access to God un unless I go through these acronyms. And the acronyms become our access to God rather than the blood of Christ, rather than the cross of Christ, rather than knowing the spirit of Christ lives in us and we call God Abba Father. That we think we've been taught, you've got to go through the acronyms in order to get access to God. A C T S. The other acronym that is gaining popularity now is P-R-A-Y. And in this, the P stands for praise. Praise God for how great he is. Tell him how great he is. R in the acronym pray means repentance. As we see how great God is, we see how bad we are. So we confess our sins to God, ask him to forgive us. This then restores our fellowship with God and draws us close to him. The A in the acronym for pray is apply. So in prayer, we ask God to help us apply the word of God to our lives, help us to live better, help us to, to, to live out our repentance and our promises to do better. And then yield is the Y, P-R-A-Y, is through prayer, then we offer ourselves to God. All right. Most believers have never been taught the fullness of grace, but they've been taught the acronyms. They've been taught to follow formulas. They've been taught to practice disciplines, to get close to God and to stay close to God and to gain access to God. But they've never been taught the fullness of the gospel of grace, the fullness of the new covenant of grace. Now, Paul in Ephesians writes about grace. He's establishing believers in the truths of grace. In Ephesians 1, 6, 8, Paul says this, to the praise of God's glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So grace is what God has done for us in Christ. To the praise of God's glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In Jesus, through grace in Jesus, we have redemption 
through his blood. Now, just take a note of this, through his blood, because that's going to pop up here in a minute in our studies. In Jesus, we have redemption. Redemption is the full payment for our sins through the blood of Jesus. So in Jesus, by grace, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So redemption is the full payment of our sins, which results in the full forgiveness of our sins. That's what redemption is. Redemption is the payment of our sins, bringing us full forgiveness for our sins. So in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and all understanding. Believers have not been taught Ephesians 1, 7 about the forgiveness of God. That's come to ours through the blood of Christ. They've been taught Matthew chapter 6. They've been taught Matthew chapter 18. They've been taught Psalm 51. But very few believers have ever been taught about the forgiveness of, of Jesus that is permanently ours, where we're fully forgiven forever, completely cleansed forever, permanently purified from all sins forever because of the blood of Jesus. Remember, Psalm 51 does not contain the blood of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 does not contain the blood of Jesus. Matthew chapter 18 does not contain the blood of Jesus, which makes them all Old Testament verses in the Bible. Ephesians 1, 6, 7, and 8 are New Testament verses because they're verses about forgiveness that was established in the blood of Jesus that Jesus speaks about in Matthew chapter 26 and in Luke chapter 22 when he establishes the new covenant in his blood. Now, once we understand verses like Ephesians 1, 6 through 8, then we can begin to experience closeness with God because our confidence goes up. I am forgiven. I am cleansed because of the blood of Jesus. Look what Ephesians 2.13 says. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. So how is a person brought near to God? By following formulas such as ACTS and PRAY, or practicing spiritual disciplines? That's what believers are taught. They're taught, hey, you're far away from God, but to be near to God, you have to have a daily quiet time. To be close to God, you have to, to uh, follow the formulas, practice the disciplines. Spiritual disciplines are absent of the blood of Jesus. Formulas are absent of the blood of Jesus. They're not based upon the new covenant at all or the New Testament at all. But look what we learn about in this New Testament verse. Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near to God by the blood of Jesus. You and I are close to God because of the blood of Jesus, not because we practice spiritual disciplines, not because we follow acronyms. Acronyms do not grant us access to God. Disciplines do not bring us close to God. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the cross of Jesus. Look what Ephesians 2.18 says. For through Jesus, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Notice what it doesn't say here. But through the formulas, you have access to God. Through the acronym ACTS, you have access to God. Through the acronym PRAY, you have access to God. Our access to God is not about formulas, nor is it about disciplines. Our access to God is about what God has done for us in Jesus by his grace. That's why Ephesians 2.18 says, For through Jesus, we both, being Jew and Gentile in the context, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus lives in us, enabling us to call God Abba Father. If you want to make a note of Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, that talks about by the Spirit of Christ in us, we call God Abba Father. This is a relationship that God wants us to have. He wants us to be confident in the blood of Christ that has cleansed us from all sin, forgiven us of all sins, and now the Spirit of Christ lives in us, and we call God Abba Father. 
And we don't have to go through acronyms to get to God. We don't have to practice disciplines to grow in our relationship with God or get close to God. We have the very presence of Jesus living in us. We have his blood applied to our sins that brings full forgiveness and complete cleansing. He rose from the dead. His spirit now indwells in us. And we call God Abba Father. And we're in a love-laced relationship with God and a grace-based relationship with God where we have continual access to God. Look what Ephesians 3.12 says about the freedom and confidence we have with God because of Jesus. In Jesus and through faith in Jesus, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Why can a person be free in their relationship with God? Because they know they've been fully forgiven and completely cleansed of all sins. And that's what gives them confidence. Notice the source of freedom and the source of confidence in a person's relationship with God. In Jesus, through faith in Jesus. So it's not about acronyms, A-C-T-S. It's not about P-R-A-Y. It's not about the disciplines. It's in Jesus and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. There's no doubt in that verse. Most believers doubt their closeness to God. Most believers doubt their forgiveness from God. Therefore, they don't have confidence. And therefore, they can't enjoy their relationship with God. But look at the confidence in, in this verse. When we focus on Jesus and what he's done for us at the cross, our confidence level goes up bondages begin to be broken and freedom begins to come into our lives because many people are in bondage to acronyms. They're in bondage to spiritual disciplines. Like my friend Henry, he was in bondage for most of his life as a believer. And only until he heard me speaking about the gospel, the fullness of what Jesus did for him, did the bondage of the formulas break away from him and the disciplines break away from him and freedom and confidence uh, came to him. He started focusing on what Jesus did. And when he focused on what Jesus did, he discovered freedom and he discovered confidence in his relationship with God.